Hello friends, Jack Black returns for yet another kid-friendly film, and this week's The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Not to be confused with the walls have a clock in their house, or the clock with the walls like a house. This week on Heat Vision Breakdown, we look at actors who have reinvented themselves over the course of their career to appeal to different audiences. Much like Mr. Black's established bankability as a family-friendly star, after his humble beginnings as a rocker singing about demons and smoking pot. For those of you who are uninitiated, Jack Black formed Tenacious D, the greatest band in this or any other universe, in 1994 with friend Kyle Gass. At the time, Black was a struggling actor and musician, but the D quickly opened doors in Hollywood as he met fellow comedians David Cross and Bob Odenkirk and scored recurring roles in the duo's HBO series Mr. Show, launching his career. In 2001, the band released its first album, entitled Tenacious D, a very creative title, which featured songs dealing with such subjects as battling literal demons, copulating with various levels of intensity, doing push-ups with a very specific part of the male anatomy, lots and lots and lots of F-bombs, and a wide variety of other material best suited for mature audiences. Not YouTube people. Leave Benny alone! Black's career on the screen reflected his band's set list as he booked roles in adult comedies such as The Cable Guy, Saving Silverman, Orange County, Shallow Hal, High Fidelity, and of course, the seminal classic Bongwater. In 2003, however, the actor landed a role that met at the cross-section of all his many talents in School of Rock, the film about a ne'er-do-well rocker who takes a role as a substitute teacher under false pretenses and teaches the power of rock to empower preteens to embrace music and their dreams was a massive success and introduced younger audiences to a new, much more kid-friendly Jack Black. Honestly though, when you rewatch that movie, maybe Jack Black should go to prison for kidnapping. All of your children are missing. Since then, Black has starred in multiple films aimed at younger audiences, including the Kung Fu Panda franchise, Gulliver's Travels, Goosebumps, and this year's The House with a Cock in its Walls. Of course, Black also maintains a career making more adult fare and has even dabbled in more dramatic work, such as 2011's Bernie, which earned him a Golden Globe nomination, and this year's Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot, an even longer title than The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Still, his turnaround from indie comedy rock star to kids film leading man is impressive. Black isn't the only actor to reinvent himself. Before Tom Hanks was winning Oscars for talking about chocolates, nailed it, he was known as a comedic actor and got his start dressing like a woman to live in a cheap apartment complex in the short-lived 1980s sitcom Bosom Buddies. From there, he graduated to big screen comedies such as Bachelor Party, The Money Pit, the best movie ever, and Splash. After scoring an Oscar nom for playing a kid in a man's body, like me, in Big, Hanks went on to reinvent himself as a serious dramatic actor, winning an Oscar just five years later in Philadelphia and another the next year in Forrest Gump. Similarly, Steve Carell was a correspondent on The Daily Show and the world's worst, then later, the world's okayest boss on The Office before transforming into a legitimate dramatic lead with an Oscar nomination under his belt and performances that leave critics satisfied. That's what she said. <laughs> After an entire decade of whooping ass and gracing the silver screen with the most glorious biceps in cinema history, Arnold Schwarzenegger pivoted to lighter fare in 1988's Twins, a biography about himself and real life twin brother Danny DeVito. Arnold then went on to even more self-deprecating humor, where much of the fun was playing up his action hero persona in a non-traditional action role, in films such as Kindergarten Cop and Jingle All the Way. Meanwhile, Liam Neeson, who was known for his intense dramatic performances in such films as Schindler's List, Michael Collins, and K-19, The Widowmaker, underwent a late career renaissance with the Taken franchise, establishing the 56-year-old Irishman as an action star in films like A Walk Among the Tombstones and The Commuter. Basically, if Liam Neeson comes at you wearing a black coat, you're in trouble. Good luck. Musicians have also famously made the leap from behind the mic to in front of the camera. Those who didn't frequent roller rinks in the early to mid 1990s may be unfamiliar with Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch's 1991 hit Good Vibrations, which launched the young Master Wahlberg's career before he tried to distance himself from his hip hop roots and make it as a serious dramatic actor. We all remember them. This year, Lady Gaga, whose real name is Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata, don't say you didn't learn anything here, continues building her acting resume with Bradley Cooper's A Star Is Born, about two dense light particles that undergo nuclei fusion deep in the vacuum of space. Perhaps by 2019, Gaga will have another Oscar nomination, this time for acting. Many are comparing Gaga's big screen transition to that of Cher, who won an Oscar 30 years ago for Moonstruck, written by John Patrick Shanley, a man who stole my name before I was even born. Thanks, John. It takes a lot to make it in Hollywood, and forging a career that spans multiple decades is a feat few actors ever accomplish. The fear of being pigeonholed as a kite, be it raunchy rocker, portly funny man, or the progressive insurance lady, is something that plagues many stars, and reinventing oneself from an established brand in your early years to a bankable draw with a completely different audience is something worth recognizing, and that's why every episode of Heat Vision Breakdown going forward will be a musical. Well!